This is Game Chat. We're born episode 123. Can Valve evolve? You found Game Chat with Buona. Welcome to the show. Now here's your host, Buona McCall, with all the gaming news of this week. Uh, by the way, that's me. Greetings, folks, and welcome to episode 123 of Game Chat with Buona. We got a great show lined up for you. Today is June 6th, 2018, and we're closely, well, we're getting very close into the summer months, and, uh, Having to turn off some lights, man. Get in here, start recording, start doing live streams and stuff. And you got these these booming lights. I have these lights, you know, with the umbrellas behind them that do reflective light. And uh, man, I just you can easily tell when it's about to get hot because you turn the lights on for whatever reason. And then all of a sudden that sweat starts to trickle down. (laughs) But the good thing about audio is that I can do this in the dark if I want to. And you won't even know I could be recording this in my closet right now. Am I in my closet? Anyway, enough silliness. We got a great show lined up for you. We got about, uh, I don't know, about four to maybe five stories. It was a pretty action-packed week in terms of news. Lots of controversial things. Lots of people getting upset about whatever. But uh, I tried to cherry-pick some of the ones that I think would be relevant to you guys and to me. So let's get right into it. And for our first story, we're going to talk about Evolve. Evolve is a multiplayer or co-op multiplayer game that came out a few years ago to a lot of controversy. You guys may remember it. It was kind of a unique take on uh, on this type of genre. Uh, some people were reminded of, of Left 4 Dead because it wasn't a particular even match with the, with the multiplayer and the PvP. Uh, you know, with multi, with the... Um, with Left 4 Dead, you usually like four people, you know, versus a few zombies and some some PVE as well, some PvP mixed. Well, Evolve had a 1v4 formula where you one person was a monster and the other four people were just uh, hunters with different types of tracking abilities and whatnot. So it had a lot of hype, had a lot of uh, media hype, Twitch hype, YouTube hype, and uh, it had a really big, big big pre-order kind of a controversy because they had some really pricey packages and their their motto wasn't the best um and it really didn't live up to the name of the game and it ended up being a stain on the game but they they kind of had a rebirth kind of had a uh a repackaging of the game and they went free to play sad to say today that evolve is planning to shut their doors as of september 3rd 2018 dedicated servers will shut down and evolve stage two which is the free to play relaunch will no longer be available in the in-game store will be available but the good news is that you'll still be able to play evolve but you'll have to do it through legacy evolve which doesn't involve dedicated servers but will involve peer-to-peer networking so if you're really into the game and you really love it you'll still be able to play it it won't be completely dead which is you know kind of a rare thing these days with free-to-play games i was kind of surprised when i when i first saw the headline that they were shutting down i thought that was it because that's one of the problems with a free-to-play type of a title as soon as they go under, all everything you've invested is gone, which is why a lot of people don't like to invest their time and money into free-to-play titles because everything could go away tomorrow and there's nothing you could do about it. But the good news is that Evolve is going to continue to live on through Legacy Evolve if you continue, you want to continue to play. Um, and this is a sad story because I, I had high hopes for this game. It was a bold move to go for this type of a, of a PvP type of a setup. Um and uh, I, I, I'm sad to see them go. Uh, so if you're on console, to access Legacy Evolve, you have to launch the game uh, normally. And on PC, you have to go to a specific link to get uh, a, a special version of the game. Uh, and I'll put the link in the show description to the support article, which talks about this. Uh, it includes everything from quick play, hunts, nests, rescue, defend, and arena, uh, evacuation, and custom games. And... Uh, the single player solo versus AI will always always be there as well. Um, so it's not going to be completely gone, but the dedicated servers are going to be going away, which is kind of sad, which means the game's probably not going to get a lot of support from from 2K from here on out. Check it out, guys. Over on support.2k.com, they got the details. Evolve is going away. They're dedicated servers, but Evolve 
will survive with the legacy involved client. And for our next story, we're going to talk about Diablo, hmm, the Blizzard action RPG of old that a lot of us grew up with. And uh, this was our first foray into the genre. Uh, a lot of us were in school. A lot of us probably almost flunked out of college, not saying any names, playing this game a little bit too much. But uh, today we're going to talk about Diablo and a new job opening that was posted by Blizzard for a, I quote, an unannounced Diablo par- project. Hmm. So a lot of people's wheels started turning like, what in the world could this possibly be? I don't know. This is what it says. It says, we need you. We're working on a new unannounced Diablo project. Are you a skilled dungeon artist? Come work with us and together we will build something exceptional. Our team of talented developers is growing. Blah, blah, blah. Come join us. So it's a, it's kind of a posting to recruit uh, potential developers, namely a dungeon artist for an unannounced project. So immediately people's minds went to a new expansion or, you know, for the really, really optimistic people out there, Diablo 4. Yes, finally, Diablo 4. We need a dungeon artist for Diablo 4. I don't know, man. It sounds like to me it's going to be just a, uh, it's going to be an expansion or it could be a new spinoff title um, from Diablo. And uh, I think the latter would probably be the better choice. I wouldn't call it Diablo, though. I wouldn't. I mean, I wouldn't call it Diablo 4. Uh, I would call it something like, I don't know, Diablo Battle Royale. <laughs> oh, I couldn't resist. I couldn't. I could not resist. <sighs> that, that felt good. Anyway, it probably will be a, 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 some sort of an expansion or it, I, I, I really don't think it's going to be a Diablo 4. I think it's probably going to be that expansion. What they're going to put in expansion, I don't know. I just hope they don't do the same thing they did before. You guys remember with the Necromancer and they charged for a Necromancer class and some slight changes? That was a that that was a really really weak expansion and I didn't buy it. For the first time in a long time, I didn't buy anything Diablo related from Blizzard because I felt like that was just really really weak and uh <clears throat> I really think Blizzard can do better. So hopefully this new title is a little bit better. Check it out, guys, over on careers.blizzard.com. They got the details about a new job posting for a dungeon artist for an unannounced project in Diablo. And for our next story, we're going to talk about Valve. And Valve has put out a a new post on their blog talking about their store and what's allowed and what's not allowed. And it's been a big, big controversy over the past few weeks because they've been blocking a lot of these visual novel games that are very, very mature in nature. And um, a lot of people feel like they shouldn't block it because it seems to be what they are calling, in their own words, a double standard because really, really violent games are allowed on Steam. Now, this is definitely a cultural thing because some cultures see nudity and sexuality as really, really bad things and other countries and other cultures see, see, uh, they see violence as a really, really bad thing. So... What Steam is trying to do is they're trying to meet them in the middle, and apparently they're failing. This article kind of kind of seems like they're giving up. They're just throwing up their hands. They go, well, we're just going to allow everything and give you filters. Uh, we're just going to allow anything on the Steam store that's not what they call trolly or uh, malicious. Um, that's purposefully, you know, trolly or malicious, like, you know, high school shooting games. Definitely not going to make it in. Um, maybe, I don't know, maybe, I I mean, (laughs) this is a very, very gray area if they're going to treat it as such, because I don't know, I got my opinion on this, but let me, let me talk about what they're going to do. Um, they said that, that they're going to like, who gets on the steam store? Let me, let me go to the blog post itself because I have an article from venturebeat.com. It says recently there has been a bunch of community discussion around what kind of games, we're allowing on the Steam store, as is often the case, the discussion caused us to spend some time examining what we're doing while we're doing it, and so on and so forth. Contrary to many assumptions, this isn't the space we've automated. Humans at Valve are very involved, with groups of people looking at contents of every controversial title submitted to us. Similarly, people have falsely assumed these decisions are heavily affected by our payment processors, or outside interest groups. Nope, it's just us grappling with a really hard problem. So, the challenge is that this problem is not simply about whether or not Steam stores should contain games with adult or violent content. Instead, it's about whether the store contains games 
with an entire range of controversial topics, politics, sexuality, racism, gender, violence, identity, and so on. In addition, there is a contra- there are controversial topics that are particular to games, like what even constitutes a game? Or what level of quality is appropriate for something uh, before something can be released? So they go on and on about their thought process and what they're actually going to do. And, you know, their plans are they are going to essentially allow anything. Uh, They don't want to decide what goes on the store. What they want to do is they want to they want to have a light hand on it. This is how I'm, I'm, I'm interpreting what they're saying. They just want to have a light hand to just say, okay, we don't want the extreme cases. Um, and <laughs> we, uh, we are not going to do anything. We're going to allow you to mark things as invalid or stuff you don't want to see. And the community will curate it for us. Okay. That's my understanding of it. And if I apologize, if I misinterpreted this or I missed a, a valid point. Now, here comes my opinion. Um, if you own a store in any form, whether it be brick and mortar, whether it be on the internet. Um, I really think you should take responsibility for what's inside. <clears throat> I don't think the excuse of, and you know, YouTube and Google has done this as well. The excuse of the mass volume being too much is a valid one. Um, I think steam has grown from, from smaller roots and, 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 Frankly, the Steam store, I think they've outgrown themselves. Um, And I think that's no longer an excuse to take a complete hands off. You've got to take responsibility. Now, here's the thing about taking responsibility in this space. And anybody can tell you this, whether it be Amazon, Walmart.com, whether it be Newegg.com, it could be anybody that that actually runs a store. Somebody's going to be upset. No matter what you do, whatever action you take, whatever item you omit, for whatever reason, somebody's going to be upset. And I think the problem here is that Valve is trying to please everybody in the gaming world, which is impossible. You can't please everybody in this space. You can't please anybody in a lot of other spaces, too. I mean, I'm just focusing on gaming right now, but you can't please everybody. At some point, you're going to have to take a stand and you're going to have to say, this is what we allow and this is what we don't allow. If someone or some group comes at you and complains a lot about that, then oh well, go shop somewhere else. That is, that is to me, part of doing business. And if you disagree with that stance, simply don't use Steam. Bar none. What I don't like about this is that this seems to be an easy, lazy approach out. It's an easier way. It's an easy way out. They don't have to deal with anybody. They and Valve does this a lot. I mean, there's a lot of other things they do where they just go, okay, whatever. You guys handle it. This is a community run thing. You know, it's they're they're very hands off when they moderate and, and 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 do stuff. They don't they don't step in very often. So with that said, I honestly believe that this is a mistake. This is a mistake. Um, this is going to this is what's going to happen, right? This is this is one of predicting what's going to happen. <laughs> um, <clears throat> the lines that they cross, the lines that they've drawn now. So things that they consider malicious, things that they consider trolly, things that um, that they consider to be, you know, inappropriate for the store, no matter what. Eventually, I don't know when, eventually, you know, society is going to deem those things not as bad as they are today. If you look at the last 10 years, it doesn't, you don't have to go back that far. If you look at the last 10 years and things which are not acceptable today, which were acceptable 10 years ago, it'll blow your mind. So what's going to happen is that they're going to have to recant on things that they banned before. And they're going to expand their line again. And they're going to expand what they want in the store to include things that previously weren't allowed. Because society will change and people will want different things as time goes on. Now, again, this is why I believe if you're going to run a store, you need to draw a line and you need to stick with it. You just need to stick with it and just say, this is what we sell. This is this is not the type of thing we sell. And if you can't, if you don't have the backbone to back that up, you're going to be 
you're going to be faced with a constant problem because right now I think really they're, they're putting themselves in the position to be in a lot of trouble. You don't put things in the hands of gamers. They play games. They're going to find ways around it and they're going to game the system. It's a sad, but true fact. There's going to be people out there. that are going to put, they're going to maliciously and purposely find loopholes in the system to get something through. That's not necessarily troll, but not necessarily too violent, but not necessarily too sexual. This is what happens. If you've been on Twitch for five minutes, you know how these people do this stuff. They're going to find that gray area and they're going to sit back and giggle because they can't nail them on a specific rule set to say, oh, okay, well, since it's not too violent, you can leave it. Okay, since it's not too sexual, you know, but there's going to be all types of things in there that's going to get through that, uh, frankly, I don't think should be on the Steam store. Now, this leads me to another point. I don't get to decide that. I don't get to decide what goes on their store. My thing is that if you run a store, you really should take a stance and curate the items on your store. What does it sound like you running a stand or a store or some kind of a thing and you just don't care what goes in it as long as it's not malicious? And then you tell people, well, if it offends you, don't look at it. Well, if that's something you don't want to see, then tell us. But we're still going to sell it. You know what? I, I, that's, I guess that's 2018 for you is that people simply can't take a stand on any type in particular topic that they just allow anything to happen as long as it doesn't affect them personally. And that to me is a spaghetti backbone that you, you have no kind of stance. You're basically lukewarm water at this point. You're not hot. You're not cold. You're basically lukewarm water that you, if you try to drink, you're just going to spit it out because you just can't stand for anything. You just allow everything to happen. So people like Amazon, people like Walmart.com, people like other stores, they have limits. They do. They don't, they don't sell everything. And they do it for a reason. And they set hard limits. You go to that store, you know what you're going to get and you know what you're not going to get. Steam, let me tell you, you got GOG.com. You got even Apple just announced an app store where they're going to sell games. Windows Store is coming along. Origin is getting a lot better. Ubisoft is making a store. You're not king forever, Steam. If you start allow uh, right now, Steam has so much so much garbage on it right now that it's hard to find anything worthwhile unless somebody tells you about it. Let's be real here. If somebody doesn't tell you about a game, th- discovering a new game on Steam today is, is, is these days is almost impossible because of all the crap and sewage you have to wade through. When they got rid of Greenlight, I was like, oh my goodness. And, you know, that was that was like one of the first signs that I knew things were going downhill because they felt that green light was was not fair, blah, blah, blah. And all these other reasons, because, again, they're trying to please everybody. They're not standing up for what they want to believe in as a company, if they believe in anything. And now they're just going to allow they're going to open the floodgates even more. And what you're going to have is three times as many games being released yearly on Steam that you don't even begin to care about. That way, finding and curation and and determining what games are out there are going to be nearly impossible. And what's going to happen is that you're going to find games on another platform because Origin is expanding. I'm pretty sure Ubisoft is planning to expand. All these other stores are planning to expand. And they're going to have very carefully crafted, curated stores with, quote unquote, high quality games. Let's be real here. There are high quality and low quality games. I recognize that indie games don't always look the best, but they're still high quality games. You're going to find other stores out there that have higher quality games. And they're going to be easier to find on other in other places. I mean, look at Humble. I mean, pretty soon, a lot of these games aren't going to they're not going to require Steam key anymore. You can be like, what is not on Steam? Yeah, because Steam's a piling mess of crap. So I, I really think Valve is making a mistake. I think they need to ramp it up. They need to do whatever they need to do to fix this instead of just giving up. Because that's what it sounds like they're doing. They're, 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 they're saying uh, there's so many controversial things out there that we can't possibly handle them all. So we're just going to give up and we're going to allow you to filter it, which is a big, big mistake. A huge mistake. I really think you should take ownership of your store steam and you should really curate it yourself. You need to have some rules in place and you need to stick by them. No, just do it. Don't 
they're, they're, I don't know if they're afraid of just the people getting upset or I don't know what the, what the fear is here. This, this seems like an act of fear almost. It's like, we don't want this to happen. So we're just not going to do anything. Um, but yes, with that said, they are going to have, like I said, they're going to have a light handed approval process now with this new system. It's not going to be, it's not going to be very strict. Okay. It's more going to be along the lines of, is this a virus or this, this a game developer just trolling us? But if you look at the games that are coming out today, to me, a big percentage of those games seem like troll games right now. So if they're going to do that, then they really got to clean up what they're doing right now. So anyway, <clears throat> I have no faith in finding anything on the Steam store, even less so. I, I just it, my faith has gone down. I'm going to have to find out about a game title via a story or somewhere else and they're gonna have to point me to a steam page otherwise i'm not going to be able to discover it because of the massive amounts of garbage that's going to come flowing into this already oversaturated store so check the story out guys I, I, this is a heavily opinionated topic i really think they shouldn't do this let me know what you think in the comments uh of this of this particular podcast let me know what you think because i know there's going to be some out there who disagrees with me but, you know, that's the nature of these things. Not everybody's going to agree. And you can't please everybody. And that's my point in a nutshell. Check it out, guys. I got the article. I got the link to, uh, I believe it's on The Verge. Yeah. No, it's on uh, VentureBeat. On VentureBeat.com, which links to the Steam blog post. Check it out. And for our final story, we're going to talk about Path of Exile. Path of Exile proves once again it has one of the most loyal fan bases on Steam. The Path of Exile incursion league came out this past uh, week and um it is it is quite amazing i'm a big path of exile fan i backed them before they came out i bought a gold package i got myself a gold kiwi pet i'm hipster oh yeah but uh path of exile with this new league and if you don't know what path of exile is it's an action rpg it's a free-to-play action rpg that is heavily heavily inspired and based on diablo 2 and uh, in an age where Diablo 3 gets a lot of flack for not being enough like Diablo 2, a lot of Diablo 2 players prefer Path of Exile over the Diablo 3 title. Um, it's a very, very involved, heavily, heavily uh, advanced game, which has a lot of mechanics that you need to play to learn over time. It has a steep learning curve, but it is very rewarding. So <clears throat> this new Incursion League uh offers a new mechanic which allows you to custom build your own temple dungeon based on actions that you perform in the past it's a very mind trippy thing but once you do it a couple times it's addictive it's very addictive this this league also includes in this patch also includes a lot of buffs to some trapper skills and, and a lot of skills that go coincide with trapper uh most notably the arc skill which is basically thor <laughs> or storm i don't care which you know whichever you want to you want to use where you just shoot bolts of lightning and it just just change the different people and it kills them and it is a really really satisfying skill they buff that coupled with traps and a lot of other things which makes this this league a lot more fun to begin with if you're just starting off with the game this is a very very good good way to get involved with path of exile because it's very generous it gives you a lot of loot gives you a lot of options a lot of survivability very early <coughs> very early on and as a result it's been a whopping success they almost broke 100k concurrent players 96,000 players at release they had like a 20 minute uh q issue which wasn't that bad and it got resolved pretty fast and then everybody got in and started doing stuff the the viewership on twitch has been outstanding it's been huge and i've been playing it on my stream you probably will notice it in my stream bites episode some some path of exile moments um, but the Incursion League is out. And what these leagues are is that they reset the ladder every three months, has a different rule set, and you have to start a new character. So it's never too late to start. So check it out, pathofexile.com. And I'll put the link to, to get hype in the uh, gethype.com in the show description, which talks about some of the other numbers that prove that the fan base has been loyal. Now, this is kind of controversial <clears throat> because... Uh, the, the guys behind Path of Exile, Grinding Gear Games, they were recently bought out by Tencent in China, a big China conglomerate. 
And a lot of people got worried about that because they thought that, you know, this was going to ruin the game. This was going to ruin Path of Exile. So far, so good, though. Uh, even though Tencent hasn't been in there for long, you know, it's so far so good land. And I, I don't think Tencent's going to gonna really hurt the game that much personally. But, you know, a lot of people are worried. So check it out, guys. GetHype.com has the details. Path of Exile Incursion is going right now. And man, man is it a success. Check it out. And that concludes episode 123 of Game Chat with One. I want to thank you all for listening today. Feel free to follow my live stream on twitch.tv slash born wire stream every day, except Wednesdays and Sundays. I start at 10 a.m. in the morning and go to 10, 2 p.m. in the afternoon, Eastern time. Come back at 8 p.m. to 12 a.m. Eastern for a full eight hours each day, every day except Wednesday and Sunday. Join our Discord at discord.gg slash Borna. It's our community-run Discord. That's where we coordinate all our activities. We talk about stuff, and we basically use it as our hub for our community. YouTube.com slash Borna. I post a video or two or three every Wednesday night, which is tonight. Uh, YouTube.com slash Borna. I've already posted Stream Bites episode uh, 16. <laughs> the numbers are swirling in my head. Stream Bites episode 16 is up on YouTube. Also, Borna.tv, which is my website. And also this podcast, which you can find at Buona.tv slash podcast or on your favorite podcast on iTunes, on Google Play and on um, and on YouTube. Now I'm posting it up on YouTube as well. I haven't heard back from Spotify. Maybe you guys can search for me on Spotify. See if you see me. I didn't see myself on there today. I applied last week and I haven't heard a thing. So I might have to reapply to see what's going on with Spotify and that stuff over there. So hopefully I'll be up there pretty, pretty soon. We'll be back next week, same time, same station, uh, Wednesday next week, which is June, uh, June something. It is June 13th. We'll be back for episode 124 or whatever it's going to be. And uh, we'll have another fun-filled episode of, of news and events and possibly some E3 news as well, because that's happening next week. Oh, that's going to be, that's going to be, I might have to make two shows for that kind of stuff. E3 is going to be packed. All right, guys, have a great day. This is Game Chat with one episode 123, and I'll see you all next time. Bye. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. Please comment, like, subscribe, and all that good stuff, and make sure you click the bell to be notified. Otherwise, you ain't gonna see this video. Wait, how did you see this video? Um, okay, bye. <laughs>